Everything I'm talking about today costs just $2. Not $2 each, no, that's total for everything. Who says backpacking's expensive? Whoa, 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 hey, 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 eyes over here, eyes over here. But seriously, these are little tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you wanna call them. Some of them I've been doing for years, some of them I only recently heard about, but all of them are either cheap or free. Starting with this half inch PVC end cap that costs a total of 67 cents. Usually when I'm driving stakes, I just step on them, but I'm always low key worried I'm going to push a stake through the sole of my shoe. In those cases, you could just grab a rock to use as a hammer, but rocks aren't always around. No rocks anywhere around here. I recently saw these tent stake pushers on Etsy and I thought, that's just a PVC end cap. Super easy to grab one, throw it in your stake bag and save your palms and the soles of your shoes or just use a rock, it's your choice. Speaking of rocks and tent stakes, if you find yourself in an area with too many rocks to the point that you can't drive stakes at all, you can just use rocks to keep your tent stake down like I did earlier this year. I didn't get good footage of it at the time and as you can see, I'm not there anymore but I did film this short that shows how I use one small rock and one larger rock to hold guidelines. And I got so many comments about how this won't work and win, but it most certainly does. You just have to get bigger rocks or more rocks. Don't have any rocks, just use a bag like a stuff sack, fill it with sand or pebbles and use it to hold down your tent. If you get blisters a lot, you should really think about changing your shoes, but that's difficult to do when you're already out on trail. In which case, if you start feeling a hot spot, just get a small strip of duct tape and put it over the hot spot so that your shoe rubs against the tape and not your skin. You can also use Luco tape, but I've actually found it kind of hard to find sometimes, in which case duct tape works just fine. A lot of people use trash bags as a pack liner to keep their gear dry. That's pretty well known, but something that I do is I bring that bag into my tent at night to keep clothes and other items from touching the wall of the tent and getting wet from condensation. You can even use it around your foot box of your sleeping bag to keep your foot box from hitting the wall and getting wet while you sleep. Have you ever gotten one of these little foil bubble mailers in the mail? These things are great to use as little meal koozies to keep your boil in a bag meals warm while they cook, especially in cool weather. Or you can use them as a small cooler to keep cheese insulated in your pack. You can buy these with Velcro closers from various brands, but you can also make one with just a little bit of Velcro for next to nothing. Hey, real quick, let's play a quick game. We'll get back to some more free gear hacks here in a minute. I'm gonna put up three pieces of gear. Two are made by Cottage companies, one is made by a big name brand. Drop a comment below and let me know which one is made by the big name brand and by the end of the video I'll let you know if you're right. Why am I doing this? Well because two of these brands can only be found at today's sponsor, Garage Grown Gear. The other one you can find just about anywhere. Garage Grown Gear is a backpacking only retailer that specializes in brands that are making the gear that the big brands simply won't. Check them out through the links in the description or at garagegrowngear.com. Now, back to some free gear hacks. If you store your isopro canister inside your cook pot, you may have noticed a little bit of rust if your pot isn't completely bone dry whenever you store it. It's not your pot, it's actually the bottom of the fuel can that is rusting. There are a couple really simple solutions. Throw one of these silica packs in with your pot to soak up all that moisture, or if you want to take just a little bit more time, you can line the bottom of your fuel can with electrical tape to keep the moisture away from the metal. While I'm here, I'm gonna grab one of these washers for 33 cents. Because if you have a bare can like this then you need a quarter or another coin to open it and I'm always losing mine. So grab a washer and clip it to your pack with a carabiner so you always know where it is. Something I've talked about before is rolling versus stuffing your sleeping bag in tents. These are called stuff sacks for a reason because you're just supposed to stuff your bag or your tent into the sack. Some people believe this is even better for your gear than rolling because when you roll, you are folding along the same lines repeatedly, which can weaken your gear, kind of like repeatedly folding paper along the same fold over and over again. The only gear I don't do this for is sleeping pads and Dyneema tents, which don't hold up as well to stuffing. Last but not least are these free little pot scrubbers you find on trees everywhere. Grab one of these, add a little biodegradable soap, and you've got a great little pot scrubber. Okay, there you have it. Nine tips, tricks, hacks you can do for less than $2. For everything else, go check out Garage Grown Gear. Thank you, Garage Grown Gear, for sponsoring this video. Please like, subscribe, and do all those other things. And as always, thanks for watching. Oh, I almost forgot. If you guessed a sleeping bag as the big name brand, you were exactly right. Quilts all the way.